Welcome back to the Crochet Credits with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the timber pillows and we're gonna do the oak version as we already have the birch version done as a tutorial. So today we're going to be doing the second one here and there's a stitching diagram that is actually pretty easy to follow once you understand it. I've got most of the sample already done in advance so I just need to create one more of these here with you on camera to show you how to do the sides and then this one unit here is done as one panel and then uh, rolled up and then sewn into to position. You're going to need a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook and a bolster pillow form in order to get this to work. So let's take a look at the diagram next. So on page number three there are two diagrams. This is the side here. This was the same as the birch pillow. If you've done the birch it's the same diagram that you're going to be using but at the end of this one when you get this complete you actually fasten off completely and then you do a second one because on the oak one it's actually done and sewn together at the end where the birch you did this first and then transitioned into the birch and then decreased on the other side. So we wanna concentrate on this pattern here. It looks complicated but it's not. Let me show you the blown up version because I've color coded it just to show you how easy it is to follow. So I have marked up this one and if you wanna do the same thing I just took an actual screenshot of the pattern and then I just blew it up for myself to make it easier. So what I want you to do is that if you're looking at it here and you see that there is this going up and down like you see here. So the repeat pattern is then from three, four, five, and six. And you will notice that when you do a three and four you're coming across in the same direction and you just stop over here. You do both and then you just carry it up and then take both of the strands and go back across the other way. So it's not like it's back and forth like this. It's back and then you grab the other one and go back and then just go the other way with both. So that makes a lot of sense. So this wave is slightly different. So in the one time when you're going to do this you're going to notice that there are two half double crochets before the middle section here but the next time you see it there's only one. So in the other one there was only one double crochet and the next time there's two. So you wanna be paying attention to that. It gets really quite easy to be able to, to master. You know honestly if you screw it up too I don't think it really matters too much. It's bark of a wood tree so it doesn't really matter. But you're going to notice it's consistent all the way across and those and that's kind of the only difference that is in between these sections. You're also going to notice these half moon um, kind of sections here, these arches. So when you're going across this way it's in the back loop only and when you're going across this way it's the front loop only and what this is doing is it's keeping the texture on the front side of the panel so that you can see the bark. So let me show you my actual sample that we have already done and then I'm gonna show you how to do this and then I'm gonna leave the repeat for you to be able to finish and then we're gonna put it together and put our, our sides together. So let me show you the bark first. So here is the whole panel completely done. I did this in an evening like not a long evening too just a couple uh, television shows and then I was good. So you're going to notice that the texture is neat. So in here you see that this is more buried this time but the next time it appears to have a ridge so that when this is done all you just gotta do is roll it up and then just sew it and it gives the illusion an actual real texture of bark you know yarn wise. So you're gonna create the sides. I'm gonna create the second one with you on camera. You need to do two of these so once you roll it up and sew it together you then sew these to the side and I also have a clearance bolster that I've been carrying around for a few years. Didn't know what to do with it but you know I got it for a dollar somewhere so I end up getting this. So I'm going to put this on the inside. I'm not gonna take it off this cover because I don't know what's in here and it's pretty much the similar color too. So even if the uh, the yarn stretches a bit, big deal. It's kind of the same color. So without further ado let's uh, start creating the sides. You need to do two of those and let's get our yarn six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook in order to play. So here's what one of the sides looks like. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six rounds that you see. So you're changing off just like you see. So this side um, looks more textured than this side. This is the inside of where the cushion will be. Because you're using the back loops it gives this illusion of rings of, of, of a log. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna get ourselves started with the light color and then switch off and then I'm gonna be showing you all that stuff as we go. So then now let's begin. So let's begin with the lighter color and we're gonna create a slip knot and I want you to chain a total of two. So one and two. Now we're gonna go second chain from the hook so it's the first chain and you're going to place in eight single crochets around there. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. 
and once you have your eight, I want you to just freeze here for a second. I want you to get that next yarn color up. Verify that you do have eight. So if you just count back, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This is the one that you're going to attach to it. So what you can just do is go in the back loop only and then just hold here and get your secondary color ready. Creating a slip knot with your secondary color. I want you to put it onto the hook and pull it and then push, pull it through the loops. And so now your secondary color is ready. So I want you to leave this color here. So do not fasten off and now let's begin to do round number two. You're going to chain up one and in the same one that you just did the attaching, place in two single crochets in the back loop only. And then in each of the back loops all the way around there's gonna be two single crochets. So just go one and two and please do that all the way around to see at the end of this round. Once you come all the way back around do not confuse that this stitch here is it's part of this original. So don't think that that's a new one. So you'll see that there's eight groups of two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I want you to slip stitch it to the back loop of the first one, let that yarn strand fall and grab the other yarn strand and finish it. So now you're ready for round number three using the correct thing. Just pull up on all your yarn strands so it tightens up. So let's begin round number three. Chain up one and you're going to place in two single crochets into the same one and then one single crochet into the next. Okay, so the repeat pattern for round three is that there's gonna be two into the next one and then one into the next after that and they're all in the back loops and these are single crochet. Please do that for round three. When you're coming up all the way back around you're going to end with one single crochet and I'm not uh, doing that out of anything special that's just keeping in line because there was a two in the one before it. So this one has two in the one that you started so therefore this must be one by itself. Go in the top of the back loop at the beginning and then switch off our yarn and we're going to then pull through and then do round number four together. So round number four is gonna chain up one, two single crochets in the first one like you did before and then this time in round four is that the next two are by themselves. So one and two and so the repeat pattern then is there's gonna be two into the next one and the next two are by themselves. Please do that same idea going all the way around for round four. When you get all the way around on the end of four go into the back loop of the first one, switch off your yarn and let's go into round five together. So pull everything nice and tight before you continue. It's too late to do it after. So then chain up one and go into the back loop, put two into the same one and in round five the next three are by themselves. So just one, two, and three. So the repeat pattern for this round number five is two single crochets in the first one and then one each in the next three. So please do that all the way around for round number five and you're almost done at this point so to continue along. Finishing up round number five just one single crochet in the last three and then you're going to slip stitch to the top of the first back post double crochet that you have. So what you're going to do is that you're just gonna let that one fall out of the way and grab up the next one and the last round six is not what you think it would be. So you're going to chain up one and you're going to place in two single crochets in the back loop. Now the next nine in a row are each a single crochet. So let's count those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then the next one is two into the same one. So there's gonna be nine and then two. 9 and 2. Please do that all the way around for the final round of number 6. So I'm coming up to the last one. So there's 9 single crochets all the way to the end um, from the, where it was. So there was a growth and then there was 9. So then you're just going to slip stitch to the top of, uh, sorry, you're gonna actually slip stitch to the regular stitch this time. And what I want you to do is that I want you to leave an extra long yarn tail so that you can sew this to the remaining panel when we get to that part in the tutorial. So I need you to make two of these and what I would do is just pull this loop through 
which is all of that. So that will lock it. And then you're going to just take this yarn here that is on there. And what we need to do is just fasten it in to position. So just cut it long enough so that you can get it into a tapestry needle. And all you're just gonna do is weave it in and out. So you have to lock it into position. You can't just leave it sit there because it may open up on you if you're using your pillow. So just grabbing it, staying to the inside, just drag the yarn underneath some um, of the fibers. If you can see the needle on the front side, it means that it's too deep. So just going through once, twice, and three times is a charm. So get rid of all your loose ends at this point. Make your second one and then when we come back we're gonna start our regular panel which will go around the horizontal area of your pillow. So we're now gonna progress in doing our panel which is the main bark area. So we want to chain a total of 38 and then we're gonna work our way back. So I'm gonna take you through the repeat pattern. So I'm gonna get you started, do your one and two and then do your three, four, five and six together and then you're gonna do your repeat. So here's the thing. You wanna make sure that when you are going to join this at the very end is that you wanna have them match. So let me show you that on the sample and then this is something that you'll have to keep in mind for later. So on the front panel when you get started it's going to have this weaving look. It looks flat in the diagram because it's technically accurate but because the way the stitches form is that you will have that. So when you go to finish off on the other side you wanna make sure that those match the actual indentation. See how the wave is there? So when you go to fold it over is that that beginning one fills in the hole so that when you go to sew that it looks like it's accurate. So you wanna make sure that you're going to test that and make sure that it's gonna be accurate each and every time. So without further ado let's start our regular bark work and let's begin now. So let's begin and you're going to use your six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook and continue to use your Bernat Softy Chunky yarn. So you need to chain a total of 38. So one, two, three, four, five, go all the way to 38 for me and meet me back here in just a moment. I now have my 38 on here so let's uh, just slowly go through row number one. Let's get ourselves established. Second chain from the hook, just turn it over and get the back hump of the chain and single crochet that one plus the next one. And continue to stay on the back hump of the chain. It will have a nicer finish when you're done if you do that. So two in a row. The next one is a half double crochet and then the next two are double crochets. You will get to understand this pattern in time. So two uh, double crochets. Now we're gonna go to the top of the peak. So there's gonna be three trebles in a row. So wrap the hook twice and do three in a row. So one, do the next one, two, and three. So now we're gonna start to decrease going down. So it's like a mirror. So we did two double crochets before we did the middle section. So there's gonna be two double crochets next. Okay, so there's one in each of the chains. So there's two in a row. Then there's gonna be a half double crochet. And then finally we're heading to the middle lowest section. So the next three in a row are single crochets. So one, two and three. So you can see that it started off small, got bigger and then went small. So let's do another increase. So the next one is a half double crochet by itself. They're all by themselves. I shouldn't say that. So they're all by themselves. The next two are double crochets. The next three are trebles. Now we're gonna decrease the next two are doubles. Okay, and the next one is a half double. And then we're back at the lowest peak again. So the next three are singles. And we just have one more to do, one more wave area. So the next one is a half double. We're gonna get bigger. The next two are doubles. Okay, 
and the next three are trebles. And finally we're gonna start decreasing as we make our way to the very end of the chain. So we're going to do two doubles in a row. One half double. And then the final two that you have left is our single crochets. So one and two. And so therefore you can see like the growth. So there's three different sections of that. So what you wanna do is at the end of the row pull up a large loop and go back to where you had started and you're gonna grab your secondary color and that's where we're gonna start our next one. So let's begin the next pass. So what's gonna happen is that you've pulled up a large loop on the other side so you're just gonna hold there but you're gonna go back to where you started and you're gonna go into the back loop only. So this is going to attach to the back loop pull through and then just single crochet that. So each one of these back loops all the way across are just one uh, single crochet in each in the back loop and that's all you gotta worry about for round number two. You will find that every time you end up with this color is that it's very simple. It's just single crochets and it's either gonna be in the front loop or the back loop depending on what uh, row that you're working with. So just back loop single crochet into each across. When you get all the way to the other side you just gotta move this one out of the way so it's where the loop is. That is your last stitch. Go in the back loop and single crochet and pull a large loop and now turn your work and now you're going to continue then and let the yarn fall out of the way and get this darker color ready to then progress into row number three which will be the starting of the repeat for this whole project. So let's get that started. When you go to start up the brown here is always gonna be a wave in some format and it's always either gonna be in the front loop or the back loop depending on where you are in the pattern. So before you get started though you need to pull up a little bit of a larger loop and get it ready then. So what I'd like to do with this, this is not in the pattern but I would like to go in the front loop only. So just in the front loop of the first one just put your hook into the front loop of the first one and just pull through and through. Doesn't say to do that but that's what I would do and it stabilizes it nicer too. So you're gonna chain four which counts as a treble and then the next one in the front loop only is going to be a treble so wrap the hook twice. So the, the key to knowing this, let me just retry that. The key to knowing this is that when there is a dip in the brown before, so you see it's smaller, this time it has to be taller. So when it's bigger like this it means it has to be smaller. So the next one in a row is gonna be one double crochet and then the next two are going to be half double crochet. So you notice that the, the stitching has just changed a bit. So last time there was two double crochets in a row then a half double by itself. This time it's one double crochet and then two halves in a row. So the next three are single crochets. So one, two and three and now we're gonna get bigger. So this time two half double crochets in a row and then one double and then three trebles. And these are all in the front loop just so that you're keeping an eye on that and the texture is appearing on the back side. So let's go smaller so it's gonna be one double, two half doubles in a row, and then three singles. We're at the lowest peak now of this particular row. And so we're gonna get bigger again. So just a double, uh, two half doubles, one double, three trebles. You can tell I've been doing my homework cause I can, I have this all memorized and it's easy to memorize too. It's a great pattern. I'm gonna try that treble one more time. A 
we're gonna get smaller. So it's one double, two halves, okay, three singles, and we're coming up close to the end, and then we get bigger again. So two halves. one double and you got two stitches left and those uh, last two are trebles. And that concludes off row three. So when you're doing a repeat you'll have to do this row. What you wanna pay attention to the most is that there was um, two half doubles and only one double and that you were working on the front loop. So we're gonna just pull up a large loop and go back to where you had started and let's just grab this lighter color and let's begin uh, row four. So row four you're going to notice that if you pull on it you have to start way up here so you wanna pull a large enough loop so that it's, it's taut but it's not too tight that it's gonna buckle. And what we want to do is work in the front loop of that top of that first chain four. Pull through. This is gonna appear inside the pillow so you don't have to worry about it too much. So just chain one and front loop only. You are going to put in one single crochet in each all the way across. So front loop again. So this is row number four and you're gonna do that every time you hit row four. So go in the front loop only all the way across. So as they come up to the end of row number four, so you're going to notice that three and four are always going to be worked in the front loops only. And you're noticing that you're looking at the back of the project. So you're looking at the wrong side. Coming into the last one, just single crochet and pull up a large loop and let's turn our work. So this is where the texture all is on this side. So you will notice that this single crochet is more buried in but the next time we go to start this, this single crochet is gonna jump and it's gonna jump forward in uh, texturally. So let's just put that darker color back on and let's get ready then for row number five. So five and six are always gonna be worked in the back loops only. So we're gonna start off. So you can see that we were really large here. We were small and large so this time we're gonna start off small. So coming into the back loops only. So come in the back loop of that one. Just yarning over just pulling it through just to stabilize it. Chain one and then what you wanna do is just two single crochets in a row. So one and two. You're gonna bury all of these uh, lines that you're dragging when you go to sew the outside. So we're gonna get now bigger. You can see it gets smaller here so we need to get bigger. So in this one it's gonna be in the back loops all the way across is one half double crochet and then two double crochets in a row. This is the exact same instruction as if you were working along that chain like you had done earlier. So three trebles in a row. And then we start getting smaller again. So there's gonna be two doubles to begin. And then only one half double. And then three singles in a row. So one, two, and three. And I'm just gonna hold there for a second. So do you see how this, this is creating a ridge? Do you see that? Where the other one was more flat? That's normal, that's what you want. So let's get bigger again. So it's gonna be one half double. Okay, then two doubles. And then three trebles. And then we're gonna get smaller again. So two doubles to start getting smaller. And then one half double. And then three singles in a row. So one, two, and three. So let's get bigger again. So it's one half first. And then two doubles. 
three trebles. Keep screwing up on those trebles but I'm not sure why but I think it's because I'm on camera. It's gotta be the answer. Okay, so we're gonna get smaller again. So two doubles first. And then we have one half. And then there's two stitches left. So those must be the two single crochets to finish. And that was row number five. Pull a large loop and let's begin. So go back to the other one. Now this one here is again the single crochets but because it's row, row number six now, cause so five and six are each on the back loops. So you're just going to just go into the back loop of the first one. Just join it, chain one and single crochet. That joining the way I'm showing you is just me out living. So you're just gonna go in the back loop each of these stitches going all the way across. And that will complete your repeat pattern. So you're just gonna go back and uh, do what you did for row three and four and then five and six and you keep doing that until you get a set amount which I believe is 18 inches but I will double check that anyway. Uh, 18 and three quarters is what it says. I can see that off camera is what you want to get for your height and you wanna make sure how they're puzzling together is when you wanna finish. So I'll meet you at the end of this row. See you back here in a moment. So I'm coming up to the end back loop single crochet right to the end and that's it. So you wanna continue to repeat your pattern now. So you're just gonna uh, turn your work. Start off with your brown again. The brown will be like it was in here. Okay, so rows number three and four and then five and six and you keep doing that until you get to 18 and three quarters and make sure that they can puzzle together. So if I did it now, you see that they would not puzzle together because they're both getting fat in the same area. So you wanna make sure that they're kind of offset from each other so that they match. So basically I would have to do um, um, the next two rows again and then it would start to puzzle again, uh, puzzle together at that point. So you wanna be very strategic about that. So when we come back now, we're going to attach it to our, I'm gonna sew the, the, this piece together and then I'm gonna make sure the, the bolster form is right inside. So I'm looking at the inside of the project and I told you before about puzzling together. So if you fold them up like this, they should look like they're gonna belong together. Okay, it's nice and easy. So what I wanna do, because my pillow form is kind of thick, I wanna lay my pillow form on the inside and I want to sew this piece around it so that the pillow is already on the inside. So all I'm just going to do is just take the yarn strand and put it through a darning needle and I'm just gonna match the stitches to each other. We know the stitches match. So just coming in the first one and coming into the first stitch on this side. I'm going to uh, go through both stitches here and all I'm just gonna do is called whip stitching and I'm just gonna whip stitch it together. So I'm going to come to the next one here and the next one on the other side. And I wanna pull it, make sure I'm pulling it nice and tight and all I'm just gonna do is whip stitch this so that it's completely around the pillow. So please do that and I'll see you at the end of this sewing. So I'm just doing my last one and you'll notice that the pillow is hanging out a bit. I gotta stretch this section that's here. But look how uh, accurate that looks. Like it's almost hard to tell the difference. Of course you're the creator so you probably see the difference. But so what I wanna do is tie a quick knot here. And I'm just gonna do another one. Just pull it nice and tight. And what I'm just gonna fold it back here and then I'm gonna weave in my ends. So remember the secret to weaving in is going three times. So one, I left an extra long tail of course. You never know. Two and three. And now I can, I don't wanna leave that on the inside just in case it pops out. And so I'm going to get ready then to sew in my ends but I wanna kinda stretch this unit first. So stretch it out a little bit and it will relax in time as well. 
So let's get ready to sew on the sides. Just as a general tip I like to create um, and tie uh, some sections to the end. So I wanna get my ends in but I'm going to just be very strategic about it. So I'm gonna have the end come out to the side and I want to just put in some stitch markers so that I know when I'm going to sew out this side that I'm keeping pretty much even. So I'm just going to just attach it with some spare yarn and go at 12 o'clock, go approximately 3 o'clock and do this with both sides and therefore it's easier to keep an eye to make sure that you're evenly spacing your stitching. Turn it over and you're gonna do six o'clock. I'm not gonna do the 12, like the 12 o'clock position because I'm not gonna, cause that's where you're gonna start. So my goal is that I'm gonna do both of these sides like this now and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna give you some tips because the one side that you're gonna notice that you're gonna have um, your yarns carrying up on the sides and you wanna make sure those stay on the inside of your pillow. So please do both of those sides. So this is where we're gonna start. So when I go to start I'm just gonna go safely around. Let's uh, do the other side now. I'm going to and then I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay both of my sides are now secured this way. I'm going to sew, you can prove it. Um, I'm going to sew one side together off camera so that I can come back and have some sound advice if I have any. So all you're just going to do is just take this yarn strand that you had left over from the side and you were going to use that to sew it directly. So I'm going to just put it onto the uh, tapestry needle and I'm going to do one side first. So right where I've kind of got it put together. Uh, you know what, I'm just gonna keep on going. So I'm just gonna go in and attach straight across and I'm gonna whip stitch these together. So just I'm gonna move to the next stitch on this side. I wanna capture, I wanna see these yarn strands that are carrying up. I wanna keep those so that they are on the underside. So just kinda go over them and then that'll trap them underneath. Just pull nice and tight when you go to do this. Advancing to the next one here and etc. So please just start, I guess just sew these around. It's good to go, do both sides and that's pretty much it for this project. So when I come back I'll have both of them done and then we'll just quickly review and call this video quits for today. So I'm just coming back around and you're going to do both sides like this and once you get all the way just finish it off. And then once you're satisfied just you can just tie it so it knots onto itself. Give it a good tug and then just bury that yarn strand. So go back and forth a total of three times. So one slightly different path for number two. And three times is a charm. So you'll do both of your sides like this and then your pillow is good to, good to use. It's actually pretty neat. I've been taking around those um, bolsters forever and I'm just like I, one day I'll use them and here was it. So it actually shaped nicely. I thought that it was gonna be a lot tighter um, like as far as more bulgy but it actually worked out pretty awesome and this is how you complete this particular idea. Have a good one. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.